Hi there, I'm Emily Muehlstein with the Gulf of Mexico Fishery Management Council, and this is a public hearing video on Amendment 50, which considers state management of recreational red snapper. Although the recreational annual catch limit has increased in recent years, the recreational fishing season has progressively gotten shorter. In 2015, the recreational sector was split into two separate components. The Federal for Hire component, which consists of charter and headboat vessels that have Federal for Hire reef fish permits, and then the private angling component, which, which consists of private anglers, as well as any non-federally permitted for hire boats. So those would be your state guide vessels. Now the separate management of those two components runs through 2022. Right now, Federal Recreational Red Snapper is managed with a two fish bag limit, a 16 inch minimum size limit, and the season opens on June 1st and closes when the annual catch target is projected to be met. For the 2018 and 2019 fishing seasons, the private component of the Federal Recreational Red Snapper are being managed through exempted fishing permits that are managed by each of the Gulf states. However, that Federal for Hire component remains under National Marine Fisheries Service control. So we're here because anglers have asked us for more flexibility in recreational red snapper management. More flexibility would hopefully lead to increased social and economic benefits. So in order to gain greater flexibility, the council is considering state management, which would allow the states to set some of the recreational regulations in federal waters. Now it is important to note that under state management, federal annual catch limits and allocations still apply. It's also important to note that any state management plan would still have to be approved by National Marine Fisheries Service. Now in the event that not all five states have a state management plan, the federal waters adjacent to the states would not be open continuously. Some red snapper would still be managed with federal default regulations. In this case, we would have to use lines drawn from the states through federal waters in order to mark the boundaries of each state's region. So within those federal waters that are adjacent to the states, either federal default regulations would apply or regulations from a state management system would apply. So I find it helpful to think about this with an example. So let's say that every state except for Mississippi has decided to have a state management plan. So Mississippi does not have a state management plan. Then their federal waters adjacent to their state would be managed with federal default regulations. If I was an angler fishing from the state of Alabama, let's say, and we do have a state management plan, I would not be able to fish in the federal waters adjacent to Mississippi unless that federal season was open. So that's why these lines apply in the case that not all of our states have a state management plan. So unfortunately, the actual mechanism for allowing state management is a little bit complicated. So we have two different types of actions in this document. The first is our program actions, and those apply to all five states across the board. Next, we look at some state-based actions, which each state would be able to select preferred alternatives for on an individual basis. We'll start by reviewing program action one, which considers which components of the recreational sector to include in state management. So the council could select to either just manage the private angling component of the recreational sector, or to manage both the federal for hire and private angling component of the recreational sector. Now it's important to note that once we go through these alternatives, if we select alternative two or alternative four, that the sunset on the separate management of the private and federal for hire components of the recreational sector would be removed effectively keeping that sector separation in place for the foreseeable future. It's also important to remember that under state management, landings would still have to be constrained to the state component annual catch limits. So the federal for hire 
and the private angling component annual catch limits would still have to be observed under state management. It's also really important to note that in any circumstance, a federal for hire reef permit is required if a vessel wants to operate as a charter or headboat in the federal waters. Meaning that under state management, those state permitted guideboats still would not be able to fish in the federal waters. So we have four alternatives here. The first alternative is the no action alternative, and that would retain federal management of both components of the recreational sector. Alternative two, which is currently the council's preferred alternative, would allow states with approved management plans to manage the private angling component of the recreational sector. Alternative three would allow a state with an approved management plan to manage both the private angling component and the federal for hire component of the recreational sector. And alternative four would allow a state with an approved management plan to manage the private angling component of the recreational sector and to optionally choose to manage the federal for hire component of the recreational sector. So that brings us to program action 1.2, which considers the mechanism that would be used to optionally manage the federal for hire component of the recreational sector. So this action only applies if we were to select alternative four in the previous action. So remember those boundary lines that we discussed? So this comes into play for this action as well. For a state that is not managing its federal for hire component, those vessels possessing Red Snapper would have to follow the federal default regulations off of the federal waters adjacent to the different states. However, the council could consider a state-specific endorsement that could be established to allow federal for hire vessels managed by state management programs to possess Red Snapper in the federal waters. So alternative one is our no action alternative. Alternative two would establish a state specific red snapper endorsement that would allow federally permitted vessels to possess red snapper in the federal waters. Vessels in states with approved management plans for the federal for hire component would have to follow a state program regulations. Vessels that are in states that don't have a state management program would still be subject to the federal default regulations. If we selected alternative two, we would still have to figure out how to handle permit transfers. In that case, we have two options here. Option A, if a permit was transferred, then an endorsement from another state would not be issued until the following year. Or option B, if a permit was transferred, then a new state endorsement could be issued upon request. So next we move on to program action two, which considers how we would apportion the recreational sector annual catch limit. In order to implement a state management program, we would have to allocate a portion of the annual catch limit to the state. Depending on which alternative we select in action one, we could either apportion just the private angling component of the recreational sector's annual catch limit, or we could apportion both the private angling and federal for hire annual catch limit. Now it's important to remember that a federal default season would be established for states that do not participate in state management. And that would be based on the remaining portion that isn't allocated to the different state management programs. So we have a number of different alternatives here. The first alternative is the no action alternative. The second alternative would establish allocations based on an average of historical landings. Now this would exclude 2010. We have a couple sub options here that would select the time series that we wanted to use. Sub option A would use the longest time series, which is 1986 through 2015. Option 2B would use 1996 through 2015. Option 2C would use our shortest and most recent time series, which is 2006 through 2015. And then option 2B would use 50% of the average historical landings for the longest time series, which is 86 through 2015. And then 50% from the most recent time series, which is 2006 through 2015. So alternative three looks at which years we might want to exclude if we were to use historical landings to allocate the annual catch limit. 
We could select option A and exclude 2006 landings. We could select option B, which would exclude 2014 landings. And we could choose option C, which would exclude 2015 landings. So then we move to alternative four, which would establish allocation based on each state's average of their best 10 years of landings from the longest time series of 1986 through 2015. That would also exclude 2010. Or we could select alternative five, which would establish allocations based on spatial abundance of red snapper, as well as the proportion of the recreational trips from a time series. So in order to sort of select this alternative, we'd have to select a time series in options 5A through 5C, and then we'd also have to select a weighting factor in options 5D through F. So next we look at alternative six, which is the council's current preferred, and this only considers the private angling component because in action one, that's our current preferred to only manage the private angling component. And this would establish an allocation by apportioning the private angling annual catch limit among the states based on the allocations that were set in the exempted fishing permits that we're currently using to manage the 2018-2019 fishing seasons. And then finally, alternative seven, which also only looks at the private angling component, and that would establish allocations based on the allocations that were requested for the exempted fishing permits, and that would total 96.22%. But then there's a remaining percent, and we would apportion that remaining 3.78% among the five states proportionally based on their requested allocation for those exempted fishing permits. Since our preferred alternative in action one would be only to manage the private angling component, this table will show you a comparison of the different allocations among the different states for all of the alternatives that are being considered. And then we move to program action three, which considers our procedure for closing specific areas in the federal waters. So National Marine Fishery Service has the authority to open and close the federal waters. Now under state management, the federal fixed close season would have to be removed to allow anglers to harvest red snapper from federal waters according to each state management plan. Meaning, when a state closes its season, then possession of red snapper would be prohibited. But federal waters would remain open for anglers from other states. For example, if the Alabama season is closed, then anglers from Alabama would not be able to possess red snapper. However, anglers from Florida, if their state management program was still open, would be able to fish in the federal waters off of the state of Alabama because they are fishing under the Florida State Program. The council is considering a way to establish a procedure through which a state could request that National Marine Fishery Service close the federal waters adjacent to their states. So our first alternative is the no action alternative. Our second alternative would establish a procedure to allow a state to request that National Marine Fisheries Service close the area of the federal waters adjacent to state waters to recreational red snapper fishing. So now we move on to the state management actions. So this is state action one and it deals with the authority structure for state management. So in order to implement a state management plan, the current federal regulations would have to be waived or suspended for those anglers or vessels that are subject to a state management plan. A state management could be achieved in one of two ways, either through simple delegation of management authority or through the use of a conservation equivalency plan where a state would submit their proposal for how they would manage their portion of the annual catch limit. Now again, default federal regulations would be applied in federal waters adjacent to the state if a state does not have an approved state management plan. So alternative one is the no action alternative as always. Alternative two is currently the preferred alternative for all five Gulf states management programs and that would delegate management authority. So the state would then have to establish a season structure for the harvest of their portion of the annual catch limit. Now we have a couple sub options of which management authorities could be delegated. Option A would delegate bag limit. 
Option two would delegate the prohibition of federal for hire captain and crew retaining a bag limit of red snapper. Option three would delegate the minimum size limit between 14 and 18 inches. And then option 2D would delegate a maximum size limit. Now it's important to note that all five states have selected each one of these different options as their preferred, except the state of Florida, which has not selected option 2B. Alternative three would establish management through a conservation equivalency plan, which may be submitted annually or biannually. And it would have to specify the season structure and bag limit that would constrain the state to its annual catch limit. We have two sub options here. The plan would be submitted to directly to National Marine Fisheries Service, or the plan would be first submitted to a review committee and then forwarded to National Marine Fisheries Service. So finally, we look at state action two, which considers post-season accountability measures. Currently, when the total annual catch limit is reached, the possession of red snapper is prohibited for the remainder of the fishing year. If red snapper is overfished and the combined recreational landings exceed the sector annual catch limit, then the entire recreational sector annual catch limit is reduced in the following year by the amount of the overage. We call that a payback. Now it is possible that the event that a state's annual catch limit is exceeded, that the following year state annual catch limit could be reduced. It is also possible to consider that in the event that a state's annual catch limit is under harvested, that the remaining quota could be added to the following year. So the first alternative is the no action alternative. The second alternative would add a state specific overage and under adjustment to the existing postseason accountability measures. In other words, if the state recreational landings exceed or are less than the annual catch limit, then the recreational quota for that state component annual catch limit could be increased or reduced in the following year. So this table simply shows the current preferred alternatives for each of the state specific actions. Now it's important to note that for action one, which deals with delegation, all of the states have selected alternative two. Now all of the states except for Florida have selected all of the options 2A through 2D. The state of Florida simply has not selected option 2B. And then for action two, which deals with quota adjustments, all of the states currently have selected alternative two as their preferred alternative. Now, the council plans to take final action on this amendment in January. The council would like to hear your feedback before taking that final action. Now you can give us that feedback either by following this link and submitting comment through our online comment form or simply by emailing us at golfcouncil at golfcouncil.org. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this presentation and to send us your thoughts.